welcome to the Backyard Professor Podcast Series. I'm recording live from the Rocky Mountains here in Idaho from my little log cabin. I'm Carrie Schertz, the Backyard Professor. I've been discussing the idea of quantum physics with some of Joseph Smith's revelations and some ideas that I have been elaborating on, and there's still more to go. And, of course, there's so many books on this subject that you can't exhaust it. Doctrine and Covenants section 131 says that spirit is matter. It's just more refined, more pure. Well, now, particle physicists with the super colliders have smashed atoms together, have smashed photons together, protons together. Um, They have come up with quarks, and quarks are smaller bits still, W bosons, and so on and so forth. The electron is so small now, the subatomic particles are so small, and since matter has wave-like properties, as quantum physics has discovered, the small... the idea of the duality of a particle and a wave at the same time, it's not an either-or prospect, it is a both, but you don't know which one it is until you perform the correct experiment and make an observation. Otherwise, it's in a state of virtual reality, so to speak, and it is in a wave-like form, apparently, and this wave-like form, this wave of probability... Now, this is not a wave of something it is a wave of probability well probability is a thing but not a material thing you see it's basically a mathematical abstraction it's the most odd bizarre thing and it is spread throughout space is this spirit we have gone just about as tiny as we can go with our particle accelerators and we're now finding that the underlying stratum of particles is not particles at all but a wave function. This is used to try to describe the probability of where we will see a particle when we look. This is classic Copenhagen interpretation. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. That's how Niels Bohr got around the particle wave duality. There are other interpretations besides that now. Well, I want to, uh, I want to elaborate a little bit more on the idea. I use the, uh, the idea that And you know, it does seem precocious, doesn't it? I mean, when you think about it, have we found the spirit yet? It almost sounds blasphemous in some respects, but think about this. How much further down can we go? We've already got it to the point to where these subatomic particles are so minutely and finer, so many thousands, tens of thousands of times smaller than even the small protons and electrons in an atom, we can see it with refined eyes. Well, have we refined our eyes through our super colliders and through our measurement apparatus that give us the chance to see smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? How small does small go before we get to the point of spirit? We're to the point now to where quantum physics says this thing is spread throughout all of space and it it is interconnected and so is it a bold thing to say we found the spirit yet and it certainly is refined and finer and finer if we are to take Joseph Smith's ideas to heart that spirit is refined matter well we've refined matter down to the point where it is spread out throughout all of space and that's why I keep invoking D and C 88 as just a basis for you to compare things. I want to uh, share a few more ideas from some other particle physicists that I've been studying and looking at and give you some more food for thought as far as what we consider the basis of reality is. John F. Haupt, God After Darwin, A Theology of Evolution. This profound found book. This is out of Westview Press, the year 2000. Haupt has shown fundamentally in this very, very fine argued text that the debate is not between evolution, godless evolution, and religion. Not at all. 
The religionists who either fear or loathe evolution have got to get with it and read this book. This book has completely changed my conception of the ideas of the interrelationship, we'll say, between evolution and religion. There is a profound discussion to be found in these pages. It's not a big book. But uh, he does note something that I noted in my last podcast about this idea of the underlying stratum of the quantum vacuum, this seething activity of boiling energy at the subatomic realm throughout the vast immensity of space. And the basis of this is information. Underlying all of this is information, formation, hierarchy. Haupt on page 70 says, The hierarchical thinking is now experiencing a revival even within the world of science. Some of the most stalwart reductionists, in fact, acknowledge that lower levels of physical reality are nestled within higher ones. Molecules in full atoms, organisms in corporate cells, ecosystems contextualize individual organisms, and so on. Reference to the complex hierarchical hierarchical arrangement of nature is becoming more and more a part of standard scientific discourse today. The spirit of reductionism, of course, is still very much alive, but it has been chastened by a fresh awareness among scientists of the practical impossibility of accounting for higher-level emergence, or, shall we say, comprehensive holes, completely in terms of lower-level components. The suspicion is growing that more complex levels cannot be understood simply in terms of the less complex, for something will always get lost in such a facile translation. This something that will get lost if we try in a greedy way to reduce higher to lower levels impartially captured in the notion of information. By information, I mean in a broad and general sense the overall ordering of entities, atoms, molecules, cells, genes, etc., into intelligible forms or arrangements. The use of the metaphor information by scientists today is a transparent indication that they now acknowledge, at least implicitly, that something more is going on in nature and its evolution than simply brute exchanges along the matter-energy continuum. Though it is not physically separate, information is logically distinguishable from mass and energy. Information is quietly resident in nature. And in spite of being non-energetic and non-massive, it powerfully patterns subordinate natural elements and routines into hierarchically distinct domains. The fact that information does not show up at the level of atomistic analysis does not mean that it is not really an aspect of nature, however, or that it is somehow less real than atoms and molecules. Discontinuous levels of information can exist within what may appear to chemistry, physics, or 